Thanks for your interest in the MCAT Intensive Review. I'm Dr. Ogan Gurel. I want to take a moment to share with you the background behind the course, and in particular, some of my educational experiences and the influence of great professors and teachers that I've had that uh, have made the course ultimately what it is today. So I want to start with my Harvard education. I got a biochemical sciences degree, cum laude. And um, I worked with a number of professors at Harvard which were extremely influential. For example, Professor William von During, professor of organic chemistry, who was a major contributor to understanding aromatic properties of uh, molecules and also a major contributor to carbene chemistry. He taught a very, very tough organic chemistry course and a lot of students were uh, quite in trepidation of taking his course. And uh, I realized that the, the difficulty, if you will, was the mathematics and the, the quantum mechanic, the quantum mechanical base of organic chemistry, and the application of rigorous analytical thought, and not just memorizing reaction mechanisms. And that was a tremendous lesson, and when we talk about achieving understanding for the MCAT, and not just purely memorizing, that's part of his uh, legacy transmitted from him through me to you. Another uh, professor was Professor Guido Guitari, Higgins Professor of Biochemistry. He was my biochemistry professor, and he's made major contributions in understanding the structure and function of membrane proteins, in particular the sodium potassium ATPase and the insulin receptor. And he's a great professor, and I really uh, remember those uh, times in the biochemistry course fondly. Uh, professor Guidotti was also joined with Professor uh, Jack Strominger. Uh, teaching the biochemistry course and he has made major contributions in understanding the major histocompatibility, histocompatibility proteins excuse me, uh, and their role in antigen processing and CD4 T4 cell function. Another professor I took cell biology freshman year was Daniel Branton. Some of you may be familiar with him. Professor Branton was the discoverer of the freeze fracture method in electron microscopy that provided uh, substantial evidence of the lipid bilayer model of biological molecules. It was a real uh, uh, pleasure to be taught by a professor whose uh, uh, work was featured in almost all the major, and is still featured in almost all the major cell biology texts of the time. Uh, he's also worked in clathrin coated pits and receptor media endocytosis, and I had the privilege of working in his laboratory. Uh, one summer on clathrin and related uh, proteins. More recently, he's worked on uh, nanotechnology applied to the uh, sequencing of single, single uh, DNA molecules. Another professor, very influential, influential, was Professor Cynthia Friend, who was then an assistant professor of chemistry and is now chairman of the Department of Chemistry. And I'm not at all surprised. She was a uh, master teacher and uh, really learned a lot from her. Her research uh, has been involved in the surface and interface chemistry and surfaces are very important in biology, membranes, uh, and cells and tissues, etc. And so her work, interdisciplinary work is very important. I did my senior thesis work with Martin Karplus, and uh, he has been a monumental figure in physical chemistry, uh, in the fields of chemical dynamics, in NMR spectroscopy. There are even equations named after him. And uh, most notably, the molecular dynamics simulations of the motions of ma macromolecules. My senior thesis in his laboratory was on the solution phase structure of DNA as uh, determined by constrained NOE, nuclear overhauser effect constraints uh, on molecular dynamic simulations of DNA. I also worked with Dr. Michael Weiss, now at Case Western Reserve, on that project. Between college and medical school, I worked at the Institut Lao Langevin in Grenoble with a marvelous uh, professor, Professor Joe Zakai who was a pioneer in the application of uh, neutron diffraction techniques. There's a great neutron reactor at the ILL to uh, biological systems. And in fact, he uh, and his team discovered the inside-out concept of membrane proteins, whereby soluble proteins have the hydrophobic core in the center, and membrane proteins have the hydrophobic surface on the outside. And the experimental evidence for that was provided through neutron diffraction studies. Uh, worked in his lab to uh, be one of the first to, actually, actually the first, to correctly determine the positions of two of the helices of a membrane protein, bacteria rhodopsin, in the sequence of bacteria rhodopsin, uh, the, the structural map and the sequence. We identified helices A and B correctly, and it was one of the first glimpses into the detailed structure of a membrane protein back in the late 80s, and we published a paper of that. So that was a great uh, experience and great impact. 
In medical school, Dr. Xu Chen, who is now the chair of bioengineering at the University of California, San Diego, a monumental figure in bioengineering and was my physiology teacher and very influential and a great gentleman as well. Uh, Professor Eric Kandel, who you may know as the 2000 recipient of the Nobel Prize in Physiology of Medicine for studies in understanding the molecular basis of short-term memory formation. I was also uh, his student in the Neuroscience course, which is a famous course. There's a whole big book by that name, read by students worldwide, which is really the definitive textbook on neurosciences. And he was a professor of that uh, course and uh, really influenced uh, me through this breathtaking uh, presentation of the neurosciences over the course of that uh, year. Uh, Dr. Andrew France, my advisor and also the Associate Dean of Admissions at Columbia University College of Physicians, was a great influence on me. In fact, he's been an influence on thousands of students, pre uh, Columbia graduates and currently practicing physicians, of course, and he has had a, a profound impact on American medicine. He was uh, a renowned uh, endocrinologist in his own right, and his laboratory was the first to identify prolactin, and um, he developed a bioassay around prolactin, understanding its normal physiology as well as its role in pituitary diseases. Other important physicians that I worked with, uh, especially in the clinical years at uh, PNS, College of Physicians and Surgeons, were Dr. John Lerb, Dr. Kai Salakati, who discovered the, or invented the oral rehydration therapy for cholera, literally saving millions of lives, potentially worldwide. Dr. Glenda Garvey, unfortunately now passed away, but beloved memory as a master clinician teacher. Dr. Linda Lewis, who was the Dean of Students at that time. Uh, Dr. Dan Donald Landry, who is a leader in the understanding of artificial enzymes, and many others, and I apologize if I missed some of them. Many surgeons I've worked with have included Dr. Robert Solomon, Chairman of Neurosurgery and a pioneer in advanced uh, cerebrovascular uh, surgical techniques, and Dr. Michael Treat, a uh, profoundly brilliant surgeon who's uh, invented a lot of interesting new uh, technologies and approaches to general surgery. Most indebted to Dr. Peter Wyden, who was my psychiatry preceptor there and uh, a world leader in the pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics of uh, uh, antipsychotic medications. He's now here in Chicago, the head of the psychosis program at the University of Illinois, Chicago. And finally, Dr. John Truman of pediatrics, uh, who is now professor of clinical pediatrics at uh, Columbia, it was a marvelous influence on me. He would have afternoon teas in his office with the medical students and we'd discuss cases and really learn a lot uh, from him and from each other. Finally, uh, Professor Wayne Hendrickson was my graduate uh, studies advisor while at Columbia and he is a world-renowned x-ray crystallographer and structural biologist. He's developed some of the most powerful techniques in uh, macromolecular structure determination, including the multi-wavelength anomalous dispersion technique, and he's really been uh, at the forefront of advancing all those structures of proteins and DNA that you uh, are aware of now. He's also, and his lab has worked on significant projects such as the GP120 CD4 complexes, which have led insight into the understanding of HIV pathogenesis. And then at Mass General Hospital and Surgical Internship, there have been a number of physicians that I've uh, had the privilege of working with. Ultimately, one of the interesting concepts is that, as they say, you learn from your patients. And I've had the privilege of learning from hundreds of patients as a surgical intern and resident at Mass General Hospital. And um, it's a two-way street because the, uh, in ancient Greek, the word doctor means teacher. The role of a doctor is to teach patients how to avoid disease, prevent disease, help them about their disease, learn about disease so they can overcome that uh, difficulty. And then, of course, you learn from your patients as well. But obviously, I've worked with some great physicians at the Mass General, and these include Dr. David Ratner, a master uh, surgeon and a, a tremendous innovator in minimally invasive uh, techniques. Dr. Matthew Hutter, who uh, taught me that one never gives up. Dr. Kenneth Tanabe in surgical oncology. Dr. James Allen, Dr. D. Donahue in thoracic surgery. And finally, Dr. Joe Grosella and Dr. Frank McGovern in urology. It's been a uh, a privilege to work with them and I especially feel glad that I have the opportunity to transmit in some way to you some of the great teachings that they have provided to me. Thank you very much.